Good morning. Welcome to worship with St. James this Sunday morning, the second Sunday in Lent. Throughout the season of Lent, we are exploring scriptures about our unsettling Savior, the way that Jesus not only comforts us, but also challenges us and calls us to move outside of our comfort zone. We'll continue to hear more stories about our unsettling Savior in these next five Sundays leading up to the joy of Easter. In addition to the announcements you saw this morning, I would again like to highlight that we are going to have a virtual choir for Easter Sunday. And so please contact our office if you're interested. You don't have to worry about your talent level of singing, whether you sing in the shower or you sing in the opera, you are welcome to join us. Please let us know and we will make sure you're connected. And now we continue with our order for confession and forgiveness. Trusting in God's promise of salvation, let us confess our sin and repent. Merciful God, we confess that we have not been sincere Christians. We claim to follow Jesus, but have not taken his path of sacrificial love. We profess to be his disciples, but we are not willing to bear the cost of discipleship. We affirm the virtue of self-denial, but we indulge our selfish desires and seek earthly gain. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for sincere repentance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. God deems as righteous all who trust that Jesus has been raised from the dead for our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Shout of acclamation and 
us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The Lord will be our everlasting light, and our God will be our glory. Let us pray. O God, our strength, you are the foundation of our lives. Build up in us the habits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Guide us by your Spirit and teach us your ways, that we may embody your love to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. from the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout the generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Our Gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, Verses 31 through 38. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, 
of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. Thus begins the Shema prayer, a traditional prayer for many Jewish people. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, God commanded the people of Israel to teach God's words diligently to their children, to talk of them at home and away, when waking up and going to sleep, to bind them on their hands and hold them before their eyes, to write them upon their doorposts and gates. In other words, God's words shall fill and inform their lives, and the Shema prayer is a large part of this responsibility. In some Jewish traditions, parents teach their children to pray a version of the Shema as a bedtime prayer, and it is traditional for many Jews to say it as their last words, or if they are unable to speak, for someone else to say it over them. Rabbi Shlomo Aharon Gloucester was dying. A Hasidic Jew from northern Israel, the rabbi developed COVID in January and spent a month at the Ha'emek Medical Center where his condition declined. Two weeks ago, it was clear that Rabbi Gloucester did not have much longer to live. His family members were notified, but they were still on their way north to the hospital as the rabbi drew closer to death. None of his relatives were able to be present. Rabbi Gloucester did not have anybody to say Shema with him. Enter Maher Ibrahim. A male nurse working in the coronavirus ward, Ibrahim grabbed a prayer book and flipped through until he found those words, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Ibrahim's pronunciation wasn't great, he admitted later, but it was important to speak those words over the rabbi. The reason Nurse Ibrahim's pronunciation wasn't great was because reading Hebrew wasn't his strong suit. Maher Ibrahim isn't a Jew, or an Israeli for that matter. He is an Arab and a Muslim. Given the complex and tense situation around religion and politics in the Near East, a Muslim man reciting a deathbed prayer for a Jewish rabbi was an unusual act of grace and understanding. Ibrahim's effort to honor Gloucester's faith received recognition from the rabbi's family, the Israeli government, and international news outlets. Hold the story of nurse Maher Ibrahim and Rabbi Shlomo Gloucester in your mind. We'll come back to it later. We are now in the thick of the season of Lent. 10 days down, 30 days to go. For some years when I was younger, I had a Lenten ritual. I would pick something to give up for the season. I also had a second Lenten ritual, failing at giving up that thing for the season. One year it was chocolate. One year it was meat. One year, it was caffeine. That one lasted about 33 hours. And every year, I rebuked myself for my failure. I lacked self-control. I gave in to temptation. I couldn't keep a simple discipline for six and a half weeks. But one year, I actually did it. Sure, after years of failure, I deliberately aimed low, 
but I avoided buying any books, music, or movies between Ash Wednesday and Easter. I finally applauded myself for my accomplishment, and to celebrate, I treated myself. I bought some books, a few music CDs, and a box set of movies. And after that, I took some time to think about it. That was the last time I ever tried a Lenten ritual like that. The next year, I gave up giving up things for Lent. There are many meaningful Lenten disciplines. Fasting, giving to charitable organizations and social causes, deepening spiritual life through prayer and scripture reading, among others. Many people take these practices through the season, and I acknowledge and I celebrate that. But I am not one of those people. I am no longer one of them because I know myself well enough to realize taking up a discipline like this in the short term isn't life-giving for me. If I fail, I berate myself for my failure. If I succeed, I grow prideful of my success. The very fact that the discipline is intended to be short-term is precisely what makes it dangerous for me. It turns into, I can do this, or I couldn't do it. It's a Lenten attempt to form a habit, but I struggle to make a 40-day habit anything more than a test of myself. Don't forget about Rabbi Gloucester and Nurse Ibrahim. We're coming back around to them. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. But this morning, Jesus gives an important message to the crowd that's following him. If any want to become my followers, he says, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the good news will find it. Today, our unsettling Savior strikes again. The disciples have just learned that Jesus is the Messiah. But then they learn that the Messiah must be arrested and suffer and die. Peter takes offense at this and tells Jesus so. And Jesus responds with these challenging words. Having a cross to bear, Jesus says, isn't something that is due to unfortunate circumstances or a twist of fate. This cross is not laid upon us. It is a cross that we take up. It is choosing to be part of a long-term project led by our Lord and Savior. It is a long-term change of habit for the sake of the kingdom of God. Jesus is calling us to what Pastor Eugene Peterson once called a long obedience in the same direction. I told you a few moments ago that I struggle with short-term obedience. Lenten disciplines are difficult for me because I struggle to avoid thinking of them as personal victories and losses. But this long-term obedience is more than reaching for a 40-day victory or avoiding a loss. It's not a Lenten discipline at all, although Lenten disciplines can be ways for us to enter into or refocus on this long-term project. It's changing a habit for the sake of Jesus. The servant calls us to serve. As the teacher goes, so go the students who follow. And I would describe the habit in this way. Human nature is to ask the question, what's in it for me? Jesus calls us to ask, what's in it for other people? In my life personally, 
since I gave up my short-term attempts at Lenten holiness, I've tried to refocus my way of living to align with this way of thinking. I have found that I am no holier and no more righteous, but I've also found that I can no longer use my successes or failures to weigh my own worthiness. For me, a long obedience in the same direction has to rely on something more, someone more, to keep me pressing forward. That's the only way I can refocus and renew and rededicate myself to the message of the kingdom. After all, I have to ask, what's in it for me? What I've already got, the incomparable grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ and a place to recharge and rest and remember what's been done for my sake. And what's in it for other people? The opportunity for them to see that grace at work in the world, binding up wounds, creating change, working for the flourishing of all. And some of them will join us in this work. Some of them will change their habits and seek a long obedience in the direction of the kingdom, too. The story of Nurse Ibrahim and Rabbi Gloucester is perhaps a strange one to name this morning. After all, neither of the men are Christian. And yet, that may make this item all the more appropriate for us this morning. Maher Ibrahim was under no compulsion to seek out a Jewish prayer book and read the Shema prayer. He was trusted with the bodily well-being of his patients, but that was it. And yet, he knew deep down that this was the right thing to do in a way that transcended any questions about responsibility or requirement or doctrine or dogma. This was a way to honor this person before him in a way that made a real difference for this rabbi and his family. This is something that could only be born out of a habit of a long obedience. And in Ibrahim's haltingly pronounced words, the transformation of the world continued. In the same way, Jesus, our unsettling Savior, is calling us to do something greater than a recitation of the faith. Jesus desires for us not only to wear crosses, but also to bear crosses, to willingly take up greater responsibility for the well-being of those around us, to commit to a change of habit, a long obedience for the sake of God's grace and God's kingdom. And in our halting words and actions, God will certainly continue this work of transformation. For this gift and this opportunity, thanks be to God. Amen. This is my Father's word, and to my listening. Skies and seas, his hand and the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, the birds that carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my
That though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler. Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this second Sunday in Lent, let us pray boldly for all in need as we put our trust in God. Creator of the universe, we give thanks for your gift of this planet, our earthly home. Help us to properly tend and nourish and protect this precious gift you have entrusted to us, that all generations to come will be sustained by its natural abundance. We also give thanks for the universe beyond our planet as we think of the landing on Mars this past week. May we continue to learn from the mysteries of the universe. God of the nations, within this planet we call home are so many countries and tribes and peoples. Raise up from among us advocates for peace and justice within and among nations. Keep us mindful of the needs beyond our own country. We especially pray for the dissemination of COVID-19 vaccine to poorer countries around the world that all might have access. Healing God, be with those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We continue to pray for an end to this pandemic. Comfort all who are sick or dying. Restore and strengthen our medical systems so they are more equitable for all your people. God of unity, our country remains so torn in the midst of political turmoil. We pray for some kind of common ground so that we can move together toward justice, so that we can move forward together to help the homeless, the disenfranchised, those striving to keep their homes and families afloat in this time of financial crisis. We pray for an end to the violence and discrimination that tear us apart. Unite us as your people, O oh God, and make us whole. Merciful God, accompany us on our journey through these 40 days of Lent. We know you have named us and claimed us as your own. You call us your beloved children and astound us with your saving grace. Lead us in the way of Christ, that we may boldly follow wherever you lead, trusting that you are always with us. For the sake of Jesus, teach us how to give ourselves away for the sake of the world. Embolden us, O God, to be your people. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. God of life, you give us gifts from the earth, resources of our life and labor. Take them offered in gratitude. Bind all our gifts together with your presence as you bind us together and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. At this time, I invite you to lift up the element of bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you to return the bread to the table and lift up the element of wine or juice. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before you receive the elements, hear the promise of God. The table you have prepared has been prepared by Christ himself. He invites you to his feast. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take these moments to receive the presence of our Lord.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts are filled with your grace. As you have drawn us to your heart, keep your good news in our hearts, that we may be your hands and voice in your world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take up your cross, the Savior said If you would my disciple be Forsake the past and come this day And humbly follow after me Take up your cross, let not its way Pervade your soul with pain of arm His strength shall bear your spirit up Sustain your heart and nerve your arm Take up your cross, no heed the shame Let your foolish heart rebel You the Lord and the cross To save your soul from death and hell Take up your cross and follow Christ No think to death to lay it down But those who humbly bear the cross One day will wear the glorious crown One day will wear the glorious crown Gracious God, send us out with confidence in your love. Gathered in friendship, we leave as your people. Gracious God, send us out to proclaim your love. Growing in faith, we share your good news. Gracious God, send us out to live your love. Serving all people, we are your hands and voice. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Those who humbly bear the cross One day will wear the glorious crown One day will wear the glorious crown Day we will wear the glorious 